Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is another baseball reaction, and the video we're doing today is What if Barry Bonds had played without a baseball bat chart pie? I'm going to be 100% um, of you, I'm not too sure what this title actually means. I am, I'm assuming it's like a baseball, like some sort of baseball analogy, like without a baseball bat, like you hear it, and I'm just thinking he's playing without a baseball bat, but I'm guessing there's going to be more to it than what I'm thinking, right? That's just my dumb, idiot brain thinking like that's going to be the that that's what this video is going to be about but i don't actually know like I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be some crazy experiment that sp nation always do which is why i really enjoy their videos but yeah man this was from the last video this was suggested quite a few times from other people and yeah man i'm not too sure what to expect but it's it's again it's an sp nation video it's a chart party video and i know i'm going to enjoy it because i've done previous videos like this yeah, man, let's get into this and see what this video is actually about because I'm not too sure what it will be, man. This is probably going to sound stupid, but what if Barry Bonds had played without a bat? Let me just turn up. That sounded as stupid as I thought it would. I'm serious, though. What if Barry Bonds went up to the batter's box empty handed every time and just. So that's literally what he means. Wait, so, wait what's this video even going to be about then? There until he was walked, struck out, or hit by a pitch. I wanted to know, so I simulated every plate appearance of his 2004 season as though he didn't have a bat. And it turns I mean, out fair without play. a baseball bat, Barry Bonds would still be really, really good. Is this because he was always forced to like walk? Is this what this video's going to have to do with it? Because I'm not... I'm kind of blown away by what he's going to do with this video and the title. I'm excited though, man. So it's literally going to be without a bat. Hey, could someone get the lights? <laughs> Thank you. Barry Bonds was one of the best baseball players who has ever lived. What was his secret? Nobody knows. If you think you know, please go to the comments below and get into a huge fight. Before we get to our experiment, <laughs> let's examine how good he was with a bat. What you're looking at is the entire history of Major League hitting. There are more than 17,000 dots on this timeline, and they represent the OPS of every full season a hitter ever had. OPS is a great stat. If your OPS is high, it means you get on base a lot, you hit for extra bases a lot, and you probably hit a lot of home runs. If your OPS is 1,000, you might win the MVP award, but okay. if your OPS is 1,250, you might be the greatest hitter ever to walk in. Okay. As you can see, no hitter ever made it that high for the first 50 years or so of Major League Baseball, Dave and then Ruth. Dave Ruth came along and did it six times in an eight-year span. He was the only man ever to get to 1250 until 1941 when the great Ted Williams hit 1287. Oh, then he went off to war, came back, and managed to do it again. <laughs> and for oh, wow. decades after that, that's the pretty sick. Of Hank Aaron, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, nobody even came close. Until? Even in the power mad 1990s, nobody could quite get there. Mad. And then, for the first time in your And that's when the, the whole like Peds thing, and like, oh, what was the. Was it eating a balanced eating a balanced breakfast? I think in the last video that was like a term that I was using. I wasn't sure what it meant. People let me know in the comments. Basically, it's to do with um, taking steroids, basically. And I really appreciate you guys telling me that actually because I didn't have any idea what it meant. And that was like around that era. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was a bit earlier. I'm not 100, percent but and I think it was because obviously Barry Bonds was kind of like in that sort of like trouble. I guess you could say. So the fact that no one made that around that era, like where the players were just sort of pumped up basically like they had all this extra sort of i guess you could say extra enhancements and they still didn't make it just goes to show how hard it must have been at the century four players broke the 1250 barrier and their names were barry bonds barry bonds barry bonds and barry bonds <laughs> fair play this is gonna be a banger man I love these in four so consecutive much. years, Bonds put together the fourth best, second best, eighth best, and best season in wow. the history of baseball. This history was written by thousands of players over the course of 130 years, and one. I'm sorry, I keep pausing. I will, I will like let it flow. But just looking at this man, it just goes to show like how crazy of a stat this really is. Man That's laid waste mental. to all of it as though it was nothing. You might think this is mostly a function of the era he played in. Okay, well, here's Barry Bonds' OPS in 2004, and there's the second best that year by Todd Helton. <laughs> and there's Craig Council's, the worst. The difference between Bonds and number two is almost as great as the difference between oh number my. two and number 161. <laughs> it's like he almost lapped him. <laughs> Barry Bonds broke baseball. Look at what? this. In 2001, he hit a major league record 73 home runs, but in 2004, his OPS was better despite hitting far fewer home runs. Turns out there's only one thing more powerful so than home runs. This is going to lead to this, right? Fear. The rest of baseball was scared of him. 
In 2004, yep. opposing pitchers walked Bonds 232 times, an all-time record that is probably unbreakable. 120 of those times, the pitcher did the work for him by walking him intentionally. This is another unbreakable record, because even if you look at the all-time top 10 intentional walkers, his total doubles or triples Nuts. the rest of the field, including guys like Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, <laughs> and Barry Bonds. The ultimate sign of fear and respect is to walk a man with the bases loaded, as Greg Olson did to Barry Bonds in 1998. Now, second to that would be walking a guy with the bases empty. The worst that's going to happen is a solo home run. Are you really that scared? It happens, but it's rare. Since 1930, it's happened 165 times in Jeez. all of Major League Baseball, so about twice a year. Here's a very oh brief God. history of the bases empty intentional walk. For a long time, it almost never happened, oh, and then it started happening more. And more. Those chunks in orange are all the bases empty intentional walks issued to Barry Bonds. <laughs> Look at 2004. They issued 19 intentional bases empty walks in Major League Baseball, and they were all to Barry what Bonds. The this isn't just a bunch of bars and numbers you're looking at. This that is fear. <laughs> that is nuts. Fear was his bat. He didn't need a bat. Let's take his bat away. Oh man, this is gonna be so good. This video is actually insane, man. Okay, so this is the nature of our experiment. Barry Bonds travels through a wormhole back to 2004 <laughs> and relives each one of his 617 plate appearances without a baseball bat. He just stands in the batter's box and whatever happens, happens. Maybe he gets struck out, maybe he gets hit by a pitch, maybe he draws a walk. So he just gets struck out every time, right? Well, here's the kicker. The pitchers don't know he doesn't have a bat. They throw him the exact same pitches they otherwise would have. So let's see how often Basically, Bonds what I'm going to think of this is he has the bat, but he's just not allowed to, he's not allowed to try and hit it, basically. But the pitcher won't know that. That's what I'm going to, I'm going to sort of have that analogy in my head. On base. Let's That's an analogy, exactly right? <laughs> how far one man can get through nothing but reputation and fear. For this experiment, we need to get all the data we can get our hands on. I was originally hoping to use PitchFX, a computerized pitch tracking system, but okay. unfortunately it wasn't introduced until 2006, just a little bit too late. Thank God for RetroSheet, which is probably the most comprehensive historical archive of any sport that exists anywhere. Decades okay. of exhaustive research have produced pitch-by-pitch pitch data of a countless stats. number of games, including every game Barry Bonds played in 2004. RetroSheet tells us every single pitch, every ball, every called strike, every swinging strike, everything. This is a goldmine. Let's start with the plate appearances we don't have to experiment with at all. Barry Bonds made 617 plate appearances, and in 191 of them, he never swung his bat. My About head. those 191, in two of them, he struck out looking. Five of them ended when he got hit by the pitch. 67 were walks. And 117 more were intentional walks. Oh my. So in real life, when Barry Bonds didn't swing the bat, his on-base percentage was 990. Now, to suggest this rate would stretch across an entire season wouldn't be very honest, because there was a reason Barry Bonds, who had tremendous plate discipline, didn't swing at these. They were bad pitches to hit. Pitchers were scared of them all season, but not that scared. No, we need to take the long road with this one. I'm loving this so much. Rewind. Let's see what you got. <laughs> I've got all 617 plate appearances loaded up and divided into three categories. Walks are hit by pitches, strikeouts, and plate appearances that ended with a ball hit into play. First, let's knock out the easy ones, the walks or the hit by pitches. This is the pitch by pitch notation we found on RetroSheet. You can tell that these are the nine hit by pitches because they all end with the letter H. Uh, below this, we've got a ton of intentional walks. Most of them have four eyes, each of which stands for an intentional ball, oh but these are fun. Three in a row. This one, B -F -B -B -I. So basically this means that the pitcher threw him an unintentional ball and then Bonds fouled one off and then he took balls two and three. So the count was three and one and the pitcher was just like, I'm good. <laughs> so obviously if Bonds didn't have oh a this plate appearance, he couldn't have possibly turned this into a strike. Oh. The same should go for all of these, right? Bat or not, the walks would stand as called, right? Well, that's Look at those. Look at those um, um, quadruple eyes intentionally. Like, that's Almost mental. Always true. Some require further analysis, like this one, C B C B B F B. That means there was a called strike, ball one, another called strike, ball two, ball three, and then, on full count, a foul. Our Barry Bonds can't hit a foul ball because he doesn't have a bat, so mm. what does he do? What do we do? 
we simulate it. What do we think that foul ball would have been if Barry didn't swing at it? Well, thanks to data I found on fan graphs, if he swung at a pitch, there was an 80.9% chance it was somewhere inside the strike zone. This is incredible. Man. That's quite a compliment to him, but it's kind of a drag for us because that means there's only a 19.1% chance this was a ball. So to reflect those odds, we generate a random number between 1 and 1,000. If the number we get is 191 or lower, it's a ball. Any other number is a strike. Okay. The odds are against us here, but we got a shot. Full count. 191 or below, he walks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, crab apples. <laughs> I love how crazy this video is. We had to take some other walks off the board, too. Of the 14 so walks unique, up for man. ball reviews, so six unique. ended up being simulated as strikeouts. So instead of his 232 real life walks, Bonds now has 226 walks, plus nine hit by pitches for an on base percentage of 381. Is that good? Yeah, it's actually really good. He's already in the 82nd percentile of all the eligible seasons in baseball history. Oh, of man. course, it's nowhere near the 609 he managed in real life with a baseball bat, but it's still good enough for 27th in baseball that year, right? Between Jesus. Yvonne Rodriguez and Sean Casey. But of course, we're not done counting yet. I ran each of Bond's 41 strikeouts through the same simulation just to see if we can get any of them to flip. And just as before, all the pitches in white are real-life pitches that remain unchanged in our simulation, and the orange pitches are the ones that have a 19% chance of being a ball. But okay. for some of these, we needed more. Check out this one. Ball, ball, foul, foul, strike. In real life, that's a strikeout, but our Barry didn't swing at those, and one of them turned out to be a ball. The next pitch ends up being a strike that counts full, and we ran out of pitches. We have to make another pitch up. Now the good news here is that we don't have to use those odds we were using before because those are restricted to pitches Barry swung at. We get to dig out of the barrel of every pitch thrown his way, period. This can be any old pitch, and in total, 58.7 of all the pitches he saw were balls. So this time, the math is a lot friendlier. Anything 587 or below is a ball, and anything okay. above is a strike. So in this plate appearance, the better odds didn't really help us, but in total, we did manage to flip a few. We can add seven more walks to the total, which pushes Barry Bonds on base percentage to 392. Okay. Now he's in the 88th percentile, despite not having a bat. Pretty That's amazing. That's mental. He now ranks 18th in 2004, right between Gary Sheffield this, and Nah, This, uh, obviously, this is just a crazy video. This stuff is obviously never going to be the case. But when you just sort of get this kind of information on how, just, just how good he really was, and like, without his main asset being able to bat, he's still just pulling off an absolute madness. Again, it just goes to show how feared he was. Like he said, it's just, it's a crazy sort of concept, but I'm loving this. So you think we can... No, 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 no way. That, that's, you cannot have the best on base percentage in the history of baseball without a bat. Impossible. I it's a nice simulation with our baseball bat. Barry Bonds finished with his 2004 season with an on base percentage of 608, which would have been the highest. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> I must have done something wrong. I, I did all the calculations correct mathematically, but maybe my approach was wrong. Maybe. Maybe, but... I mean, maybe that 58.7% chance of the random pitch being a ball, maybe that uh, is unfair for me to use somehow. I don't think I did anything wrong, but I look at the results. I think I'm full of crap. I think I'm, I have to be just like some <laughs> idiot who's full of crap. Please show up in the comments and, and tell me how I'm full of crap because I genuinely want to know because I have to be, right? Because this Fantastic is video, man. But what if I'm right? 
what if that was a fair simulation and we found that the best way to get on base for Barry Bonds was to not do anything? To be intimidating. What does that say about baseball? Nothing good. <laughs> I mean, fair play to him, man. Whether he got his calculations a bit wrong or not, this video was absolutely insane, man. I was kind of hoping for... I'm just going to read the comments, like he said, to say, because, like, it will probably give me a better idea of how crazy and if this was a fair rep representation. And again, this is the craziest sort of example, so it's not going to happen, but videos like this just help emphasising certain things. And yeah, man, I really enjoyed this. Thanks for the suggestions, because this was something completely different, but man, this was crazy. I was kind of hoping for a scientific examination of how how far Barry could could punch a baseball pitch for him. But this is even more amazing than menacing horror of Barry Bonds. What the fuck was that comment? But what if he played with two bats? Oh, hey, that's the show now, obviously. <laughs> These analogies are going crazy. <laughs> wow, it's a big coincidence that all four players that broke 1.25 in OPS were all named Barry Bonds. <laughs> This is an absolute dumbest idea, and I ever I love it. Exactly, man. These kinds of videos are just what you love to see because they're just so out of, they're just so out of nowhere and just so random, man. Like the concepts are so crazy and stupid. Actually, it actually makes for an insane, insanely like, ex insanely interesting video to watch. I love how you use Barry in regular clothes, just smiling as if she say, "Hey, oh hey, guys." <laughs> and that that got me as well. That clip with him just like standing there. <laughs> What Barry Bonds has played about a baseball bat, so we're making him a pitch in the American League now. This is a banger, man. I really appreciate the suggestion. I really appreciate the suggestion. This was something completely different, and it may not be for everyone. I know these kinds of videos aren't for certain people, but I just love. I love this kind of stuff, man. It involves stats. It involves crazy, like crazy stories, like things that just couldn't happen. I love this sort of stuff, man. But I hope you guys enjoyed. You want more stuff like this? Let me know in the comments, man. If there's more like chart pie baseball videos you'd like me to do, man, just link them in the in the comments and I'll be sure to do them in the future. But hopefully you guys enjoy until next time. Like, subscribe, and peace. That was fucking sick.